My name is David Summerfleck. For over 20 years, I worked as a digital marketing agency project manager and consultant where I helped business owners go from failure and ruin to reinvesting profits. Now I'm interviewing other experts and professionals to find out what makes them tick and get their thoughts on how you can learn from their experiences and revitalize your life professionally and personally. We cover topics as wide ranging as digital marketing, business innovation, culture, global trends, and ways we can all better channel our creativity. So let's join the discussion. Anchor's a great way to start podcasting today. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. There's creation tools that let you record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. It'll distribute your podcast for you so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast, too, with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Now, back to the show. Hi, everybody. In this episode of the David Summerfleck podcast, we're going to respond to some listener questions. So let's go ahead and jump into it and listen to the first question. Hi, David. Uh, my question is... Uh in regards to cold email and customers uh, not responding, even if they say they're interested. So basically I send cold emails and I ask the prospect if they're interested in my services, uh, which is with web design services. And they say they're interested. And then I reply to them to ask for a phone meetup and they don't answer. They almost never answer. Hi, Bruno. Thanks for the question. You know, it's really hard to give you a specific do this, do that type of answer without seeing you in action, without, you know, meeting you face to face. But here's the thing. When you cold email someone, for those who don't know, cold email basically means you see someone who you think would be a good fit for your services or products. So you send them an email and say, basically, hi, I think, you know, my services or products would be a great fit for you. Uh, can we schedule time to talk so I could go over what I provide? And it's basically a sales call. Now, the problem with cold prospecting is that it's kind of akin to you're going to a networking group. The people in the networking group weren't expecting you, they don't know you, they're not prepared for you in advance. They may or may not have a need for your services. They may or may not have a perceived need for your services. They may not even be able to afford your services and they may not understand your services. So they really, may not be an ideal fit for you. That's the main problem here. And then the secondary problem is that even if they look like a great fit on paper, they don't know you, they've never met you before, they don't know anything about you. So they're more comfortable working with someone who they know, are familiar with, or even a brand that they're more familiar with, such as a generic, a DIY template builder service, or even someone on one of these um, freelancer uh, bidding sites like Fiverr or what have you or Craigslist, because to them, at least this site is kind of vetting you or, or referring you to them. So you're a complete stranger to you, um, to your services. So they really haven't been fully screened, meaning they haven't been vetted to find out if they're a good fit for you or not, have a need, 
perceive the need, can afford your services, want your services, and that creates an issue, to say the least. So what do you do? My solution would be to step back and not cold email at all. So what I would do, since A, it's not working, you said that yourself, uh, Bruno, that it's not working. So I would take a step back and try a new approach. You don't have to do this uh, indefinitely, obviously. You could try it for a month or two and just see how this works. But what I would do first is focus in on screening more efficiently. Meaning, you know, in marketing, we call this identifying your ideal consumer avatar or your perfect customer avatar, where you map out who is my ideal customer, what is their gender, what is their age, what are their demographics, what are their annual income, as specific as you possibly can be, so that you try to find the right fit from the customer's perspective for you. So for example, for me, if I want to work with a client who I really believe I can help, that would have to be what's called an enterprise level business owner, meaning they're already established, they're already making money, they're not going to be broke or, or poor or what have you. They're going to value the services that I can provide to them and understand the services that I could provide to them. So enterprise fits nicely. An enterprise business is usually a business that's been in existence usually for about five years, has 50 or more employees, usually two or three at least locations are established in their industry. So they're usually gonna have a need for digital marketing. They're gonna have some past experience with digital marketing and know how to use it. Maybe have someone on staff or even a department or a handful of people to refer the digital marketing to so I could work with this group of people or this department or this contact person. They'll know to have a realistic budget to set aside. They'll be kind of familiar with KPIs or you know, uh, Facebook advertising and PPC and SEO and so on. They'll have at least some level of familiarity. So when it comes to cold emailing and cold prospecting, you want to make sure that they're going to fit who your ideal client persona or avatar is. Second to that, it's very, very helpful if you can find a niche. Now, you hear about niche marketing all the time online. Finding your niche market is this miracle cure, but it's really not, and it's more difficult than it sounds. Your niche market is that little sweet spot area that you're already experienced in, that you already know people in this industry and you have some inside connection um, or, or you know other uh, business owners or what have you that can kind of give you the leverage. For example, it, now you mentioned web design. So let's say you're a web designer but you're also a lawyer and you work at a law firm or you clerk at a law firm or several law firms or what have you, just as one example, you're already going to know people in the legal industry. So you'd want to contact them and say, hey, I can make you number one at Google locally to begin with, or I can help you with your marketing or web design or e-commerce, so you can take payments for your services online. I can help you with these things. Well, you already see them on a daily basis. You already live in this area. So that means you can target local lawyers much more efficiently than anyone else could. You know the industry, you know the people, you know the demographics, you go to the industry meetings. So you want to identify a niche market. Then you want to build rapport with them over time, you don't want to just go up to them and just say, hi, you know, I can build a website for you that could put you on the first page of Google search results. Well, 
that's not going to do any good for the the prospective lawyer if that lawyer sees no value in being on the first page of local Google search results, or if they don't understand what e-commerce is or see any value in that. So you kind of have to get to know them first and vet them and see if they're a good fit for you, even though there's that niche connection. But the more you know your market, the more you know the person, the more you can kind of introduce one another to each other, the easier it's going to be for you after two or three conversations to say, you know what, I see that you have this pain point. I could really help you resolve this pain point if, if you're interested and you see this as something that's valuable to you. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And one of the ironies that I had to learn as a small business mentor for all those years was the businesses that often need our help the most can also, ironically enough, be businesses that don't want it or could actually fight against it by saying, you know, I'm, I'm not going to invest any money in this. I'm not going to invest anything into marketing or my budget's going to be, you know, very, very low or fix my broken website or what have you. There's some kind of, you know, unrealistic expectations for, for what they want. You really got to get to know them as a person first and then as a business owner, entrepreneur, secondly. And the other thing that I would say is find ways to connect indirectly. And that could be being a podcast guest on business and entrepreneur podcasts. It could be speaking at industry association meetings. It could be talking to people in your place of employment or talking to a supervisor or whomever and saying, you know, I have this area of expertise. If you need someone to give a presentation, I could do this and kind of feel that out. But also, if you interact on social media a lot, you want to uh, feel people out before you start coming at them with your ability to help them. Ask them, how serious is this problem? How long have you had this? What have you been doing so far by yourself to try to solve this problem? Because I can assure you, 99.9% .9 of the time they try to solve the problem themselves using a free DIY template builder. And 99% of the time, they're not getting the traction that they want. So they either know it and see it as a problem, or they don't know it or don't see it as a problem, or it's just a, a hobby that they do just for fun. You've got to differentiate those and get through that before you can really help them. So my solution for the cold emailing impasse is to take a break from cold emailing, at least for a month or two, and try creating a ideal consumer avatar. Try networking online. Another suggestion I would have would be to volunteer as a digital marketing or web design mentor for um, any and all nonprofit organizations that you can find locally and maybe nationally and online as well. And you can also through a lot of nonprofit mentoring organizations, you can also offer to help uh, struggling nonprofit organizations, but to a limited extent. So you can say, I'll offer to provide a free, no hassle consultation to struggling nonprofits. And then take a step back and say, now if you want to engage my services, you can contact me outside of this nonprofit organization and you can try to work with them that way. But my recommendation would be to find alternatives to the cold email and cold prospecting approach for a couple of months and try some of the approaches that I suggested and then see how those work for you. And if you run into other problems, you can get back in touch 
just go to www.askdms.blue and leave me a follow-up question if you want to uh, get a more specific answer about something. So I hope that's helpful to you for that particular question. Okay, next up is a question from Greg. Let's listen to Greg's question first. What are some ways that I can communicate value to my potential web design clients? Okay, thanks for the question, Greg. How to explain value to web design clients? The first thing I think is to understand that value is in the eye of the beholder. The client has to first see value beyond just a template and see value in SEO, which is search engine optimization, e-commerce, which is how you take payments online. They have to see value in content marketing, responsive design, automation, PPC, which is paid advertising, and the, all the elements that go into go into digital marketing and that make websites 24-7 powerful marketing machines, marketing divisions of a business. Without content that uh, the business owners, customers want and need, there's nothing in that website to attract and nurture lead generation or to promote on social media or to offer new website visitors. Without e-commerce, that works safely and securely. There's no way for the business owner to take payments for their services or for the items that they may sell. Without appointment scheduling, for example, if they provide services, they're leaving money on the table. Without SEO, they can't appear on the first page of Google search results. Without PPC, they're very unlikely to gain traction in social media uh, sites like Facebook and LinkedIn and so on. So they're going to need a realistic budget for PPC and so on. But more importantly, that all of those elements of digital marketing that go through the company website, through it like a portal, are the facts that, A, they have to have high value problems that you can identify needing to be solved. For example, they have to agree and understand that they need to reach more of a specific type of customer or expand into a specific type of new market. They have to see a problem on their part that has high value to them in solving. Next, I would say is that not only do they need to have high value uh, problems that you can solve for them, such as reaching more customers and a certain type of customer or market share. They have to perceive and agree that there is a need on their part that they're willing to invest in order to solve. And third, they have to be able to afford your services or goods. So this is one of the key reasons why it's not a good idea, even if you're a new or struggling freelancer, to say that you just want to work with any client. If they have no business to speak of, or it's a hobby that they do for fun and are committed to growing a business, well, they may not be able to pay you or pay you realistic industry wages and might not even know how to work with you. That can lead to scope creep, where project can take much longer to complete than necessary. It can lead to communication issues or other issues down the road. So before we can talk about value, that the client has to see the value themselves in solutions that you can provide and want those solutions and be able to afford those solutions. So now that we kind of have that out of the way, you as the web designer need to focus more on first screening clients for good fit. And then secondly, onboarding them before they can provide the value to you, or you could help them. So screening is making sure they're a good fit. Do they have a profitable business or is it a hobby, like I said? 
Are there high value problems you can identify, such as how e-commerce can help them make more money, taking payments online for services and so on. For example, a restaurant. You know, if you have a restaurant that has multiple uh, locations and they're not using e-commerce to take payments online for their orders, that's a high value problem because they're leaving money on the table literally every single day. People could be ordering pizza or sandwiches or, you know, whatever for delivery and for pickup. So if they're not doing that, then this isn't going to be a highly profitable restaurant or not as profitable as it could be. Local pubs, local restaurants, all should be using e-commerce to offer home delivery as well as pickup. So that's a market. Uh, need that's profound. So for example, if you were to talk to a restaurant or a pub, you could say, well, how many visits is your website getting per day? If they don't know, that's a problem. What's your current sales compared to other competitors? You know, do you think that you could increase sales by, by you know, offering, you know, uh, order placement online? They don't need to know how e-commerce works and the programming and all that. They're, they're probably not going to understand that. And that's not their job. But it's your job as the expert to identify their problems, diagnose their problems, and offer solutions to their problems. And the bigger their problems are, the more costly their problems are, the more value there's going to be in, in it for you. And then it's your job to communicate the value to them. So they need to see the value in the services that you provide. So the, really the way you do that is by first talking to them one-on-one -on -one in friendly uh, terms and then diagnosing what's holding you back from being more profitable. What are you doing right now? What have you tried to do so far for free on your own? How did that work for you? Would you like better results, more results? Are you open to investing, for example, $3,000, if it could mean making $30,000 a few months later? For most committed, established business owners, it's a no-brainer. But for a hobbyist, the answer is probably going to be no, because it's a hobby. You kind of see where I'm going. So you need to first screen to make sure that they have a business have high value problems that you can identify and solve or that they suggest to you and need help with. The reality is that websites by themselves have no real value. I mean, nobody who's a business owner wakes up in the middle of the night and says, oh my God, I have to have a template. I have to have a website right, right away. What keeps them awake at night is saying, I might not be able to pay my mortgage this month. I might not be able to... Um, you know, make payroll for my employees this week. I may not be able to pay my suppliers this week. So these are real high value problems. So if you can step in and say, look, I know I can solve some of these problems for you using digital marketing tools that are a part of the larger website. That's where you can step in. You can diagnose the problems, explain the value to them if they don't already see it, and then step in. So it's a little bit complex in that regard. You got to talk to them, see what's holding them back, diagnose the problems, and then ask them, you know, if they be if they want help solving those problems. What's the value of that for you? So you've got to get into that dialogue. And the more you practice, the easier it will be for you. So it's really helpful to have a friend you can practice with. You know, being a business owner of any type imaginable and just practicing with that, you know, looking at how other people do it and uh, kind of role playing. The more you do that, the easier it'll be for you just kind of getting into dialogue with them, you know, saying, you know, hi, my name's Greg. Uh, I'm a web designer. Well, they're going to say, well, I already have a website from Wix or Weebly or Squarespace or Blogger or whatever. So I really don't need your help. And it falls flat. Or why would I pay you money when I can go get a free DIY template, right? 
they're not seeing the value. But if you say to them, hey, look, how is your free template doing for you? Are you getting more phone calls? Are you getting more emails from new clients? Are you expanding into new markets? Are your sales increasing? If not, I can really help you with that. Now, if they ask you, well, how are you going to do that, Greg? We're getting lost in the weeds of talking about techie terms that they may not understand. And maybe they do, maybe they don't. But you don't want to get into that. You want to focus in on, I know I can solve these problems if you can legitimately do it by using SEO to help them get greater visibility. They appear on the first page of Google search results if you can do that. By using e-commerce to help them process payments now that they could never do before or by helping them gain greater visibility in Facebook ads, for example. So you've got to diagnose problems first before you can offer solutions to the problem first. So, you know, get engaged, try to have a little bit of a back and forth conversation first about what problems are going through. And if they don't want to talk to you about this, then they're probably a hobbyist or not an established business. They haven't identified any problems yet. They don't know of any, so you really can't work with them. And another great way to get really uh, good at this, if you're new or if you're just rusty, is by just Googling, you know, nonprofit volunteer or, you know, volunteer websites. And you could volunteer for struggling nonprofits and uh, like I said in the previous question, offer to provide free digital marketing or web design consultations for struggling nonprofits. And tell them, I want to diagnose high value problems that you're going through so I can help you better understand how the types of services that I provide could really benefit you and answer any and all questions and concerns that you might have. By getting better and better at that, you become more and more comfortable at talking to potential clients and then relaying them into becoming real clients. So you want to have a process that you use to screen and identify. Well, I should say first you want to identify who is your ideal client for you. Then you want to have a way to onboard them. And onboarding means making it very, very easy for them, the business owner, as effortless as possible for them to give you content that you need or or have you created uh, for them or a way for you to find out what SEO they need or for you to find out and set it up yourself. So you want to be able to provide these solutions for them as easily and as effortlessly as possible. And then that can help you uh, fine tune, not just a website, but the digital marketing that goes through the website to help them, the business owner, reach more of their ideal customers in turn. So that's how you can explain the concept of value to them by looking for problems that they're having that are costing them a lot helping them recognize what problems they may be experiencing and then diagnosing them, asking them about the value of these big problems and then offering to help and making sure obviously that you can do that as well. So I hope that's helpful. Now, if you want to ask follow-up questions to maybe dig down more specifically into one area such as SEO or e-commerce, feel free to get back in touch. You can go to uh, dms.blue slash podcast guest to submit the question or go to uh, ask dms.blue and you could submit another uh, follow-up question. So I hope this is helpful. And for anybody listening, I hope these answers have been helpful to you as well. If you'd like to submit a digital marketing question that's very specific, or even broad, or a business-related question, please go to uh, dms.blue slash podcast guest. Or for that matter, if you'd like to apply to be a guest, you can also go to that same uh, website link. So thanks, everybody, for listening. And I hope that this episode has 
been helpful to you.